acne is way too common. And even though I never had it as a teenager, most people have it at some point, usually as a teenager, but sometimes even as an adult. And people usually don't know how to minimize it, eliminate it, or even where to start. So let's talk about it. According to scientific research, acne affects about 90% of modern adolescents. But surprisingly, surprisingly, it's absent in hunter-gathering communities. Remember, there are a number of hunter-gatherer tribes still in existence today. The Maasai tribe is my personal favorite because I had a friend in special forces who used to live with them to protect their primitive lifestyle against hostile governments. The Maasai, by the way, that's the tribe that eats mostly meat and drinks blood. But anyway, not only is acne absent from hunter-gathering tribes, it's absent from vintage high school photos. Look closely at this photo from 1937. No acne. Here are some more teens from 1940. No acne. More from 1940. No acne. More from 1940. No acne. I've seen hundreds of similar pictures. What's the big change we've made? I think it's five things, but I'd love to hear additional ideas. And some, most of the research is just accepting that teenagers have acne. And then they're trying to sell more drugs to decrease the acne, which is nonsense. Our ancestors didn't need benzoyl peroxide or doxycycline or contraception. Neither do we. So here's my list of the top five reasons, triggers for acne. Number one, seed oils. They're everywhere and they take a long time to flush out of our bodies. Number two, artificial estrogen chemicals in our personal care and drinking water, which alter our hormones. Also everywhere. Number three, inflammation, especially from lack of sunshine and gut issues, which is where 80% of our immune system resides. We'll talk about it soon. Number four, high carb and sugar rich diets, which is related to seed oils and gut issues, but slightly different, which we'll talk about. And number five, preservative chemicals and foods, which again, they're everywhere. All of these things are unnatural compared to hunter gathering tribes and they're everywhere in modern society. Also, I tried to create this list in order, seed oils being the worst offender in my opinion, but let's go in reverse order and work back regarding the scientific research. Number five, preservative chemicals and foods. I remember in 2014 when Subway made headlines because of one blogger, Vani Hari from foodbabe.com, who raised awareness that the Subway bread had azocarbidum, azocarbonamide, which is literally yoga mat material. She created a petition and 67,000 people signed it, which inspired Subway to actually remove the chemical. But then it turns out that basically all the other fast food chains were using it. And in fact, the EWG, the Environmental Working Group, which has an excellent tap water database for Americans, if you just put in your zip code, you can see chemicals that are above the, the, in your water above the government safety limits. But the EWG literally found and listed over 500 food products that have azocarbonamide. It's a real problem to this day, unfortunately. And this chemical, by the way, illegal in Europe and Australia. So this is reason 121 that some people can eat bread in Europe and feel fine. And then they feel terrible eating bread in America. Yoga mat material. But it's not just azocarbonamide. BHA and BHT, butylated hydroxyanisole and butylated hydroxytoluene. They're in processed foods, cafeteria foods, and antiperspirant, which should give you a hint where acne comes into play. But BHA and BHT chemicals, they're waxy petrochemicals that are reasonably carcinogenic, but they also act as antioxidants. So they're used as preservatives for food, so the food doesn't get rotten sitting on a shelf for two years. We could sit and go through all the studies and show how there's sufficient evidence for cancer causation in animal experiments and how they've never even bothered to test this on humans, but I'm sure you get the idea on this. And once again, illegal in Europe. Next, I haven't even mentioned all the artificial food colorings. Propionic acid, which I've done a short video on, carrageenan, which I've done a short video on, and so much more. The basic scientific principle here regarding these chemicals is our bodies use sweat as a detox mechanism. When I was at Boston University Medical School, I was literally laughed at for asking whether our bodies can sweat out heavy metals. So a lot has changed in the past 20 years. The problem with sweating out a constant stream of these artificial man-made foreign chemicals is they end up altering our healthy skin bacteria and they end up clogging our pores. It's the one-two punch for acne. It's the recipe for acne. I even know people that eat healthy 
but then they have cheat meals occasionally and this triggers back knee which is clogged pores on the back where they clean up their diets and lifelong issues with back knee go away sometimes pores get clogged on the thighs too or other places but it's often just your body trying to de detox trash that's getting backed up so that's preservative chemicals in foods watch out for them their triggers eat whole foods like animal products fruits and veggies now let's talk about sugar rich diets or even high carb diets without sugar for example when people eat lots of bread chips pasta and then they drink various juices or wine which leads to a high fast blood sugar blood sugar chronically above 85 and in case you're keeping track this was number four on the top five list high carb diets so when your blood sugar is chronically high, again, I define that as a fasted blood sugar number above 85. And you can buy a blood glucometer on Amazon and check this at home. But if your number is above 85 all the time, it creates high hemoglobin A1C, which is literally just sugar stuck to blood cells, hemoglobin. But this isn't a process exclusive to hemoglobin. Sugar can get stuck to all different kinds of things in your body. The proper term is advanced glycation end product or age, which is sugar sticking to proteins. And sugars are causing blood flow problems. Again, think detox or clogging up your detox pathways. Sugar doesn't just get stuck to proteins and fats, they can even stick to your DNA. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of research specifically looking at acne and advanced, advanced glycation end products, but we know increased age content in the skin causes poor skin elasticity deeper wrinkles and these sugar coated proteins and sugar coated fats accumulate which leads to destruction of skin tissues by regulating gene expression destroying protein structures and they cause skin inflammation by binding to the age receptor which is called rage the receptor for advanced glycation end products Anyway, there are studies specifically finding that rage activation is common in cases of severe acne, as well as post-acne scarring. But again, there haven't been much studies here because government-funded and pharma-influenced research has been focused on the money makers, the artificial drugs, rather than telling people to eat less carbs. The nice thing about number four here, high-carb diets, is you can check your blood sugar so you can easily track your status on this. Again, when you check your blood sugar in the morning, when you wake up, your fasted number the goal is to be below 85 in american units okay number three let's talk about inflammation first it's worth mentioning that acne is often caused by a type of bacteria called propiani bacterium acnes which is basically a bad skin bacteria this bad skin bacteria creates skin inflammation so first of all tap into sunshine get as much skin as you can exposed to sunshine for 10 minutes per day this helps kill bad skin bacteria and regain the balance of healthy skin bacteria. There are literally studies showing how healthy skin microbiome bacteria are and how sunshine enriches these families of bacteria which contribute to protection against sun damage. Plus they outcompete those bad propriani bacterium acnes. I even thought about making sunshine number six on the overall list here, but a top six list doesn't sound as good as a top five, so I'm including it here in the skin inflammation section. But besides propiani bacterium acnes, there's newer evidence that shows other types of inflammation is involved in all stages of acne lesion development, even before you can see it. So here's the thing. Your body creates inflammatory chemicals to trigger your immune cells, usually to fight infection or to heal a wound. But if you have too many of these inflammatory chemicals, it causes your immune cells to be hyper aggressive. Acne ensues. And anytime we talk about inflammation, we need to include the gut lining, front and center, our intestines, right? This is because the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue is where 70% of our immune cells reside, and 10% more immune cells reside just outside that layer in the gut associated lymphoid tissue, the GALT. Meaning a total of 80% of our immune cells are hovering around our gut lining. And since acne is definitely amplified by inflammation, eating healthy is a key component of preventing or reversing acne. How do you eat healthy? Unfortunately, that's an extremely personalized question because everyone is different and our genetics are all different here. This is why I do DNA consulting. Some people eat lots of fruits and do amazing. Some people eat lots of fruit and have major health issues like gout and non-alcoholic fatty liver. In a perfect world, everyone would do a DNA consult and they'd understand their unique situation relating to diet. But the basic question you should ask yourself is, what did my ancestors eat for thousands of years? I'm not talking about your grandparents because they were tricked into buying microwave dinners and Crisco and all kinds of weird shenanigans. 
that only have become more common and more alien in our modern culture. I'm talking about pre-industrial era foods and eating habits. They weren't snacking, that's one thing. They weren't drinking soda and juice. They weren't eating processed foods. Also, two of the most common gut issues people have is relating to pasteurized dairy. Try literally avoiding all of it, the cheese, the sour cream, the yogurt, the heavy cream. And the other common one is grains. I'm not just talking about gluten, I'm talking about all the grains. They're notoriously harsh on the gut lining. Oatmeal, bread, pasta, crackers, chips. If you're worried about money, and looking for inexpensive whole foods that your ancestors probably ate all the time. Uh, invest in a crossbow, chest freezer, crock pot. Then you can shoot wild pigs if you live down south, which literally every farmer is happy to have you decrease the population. And if you live in northern USA, shoot some does. Learn to shoot does. Many states have unlimited deer hunting doe tags for crossbows for 20 bucks a tag. That's hundreds of pounds of wild game meat. And for the rest of your life, if you toss that meat, including the bones, into a crock pot every day, you're suddenly an amazing chef. So that's number three, inflammation. Now the next trigger for acne, trigger number two, is artificial estrogen chemicals. These would include parabens, phthalates, and BPA, alternatives to BPA. Basically, people are rubbing these xenoestrogens directly on their skin using lotions or soaps, which have residues that remain on the skin or people are exposed to them from fragrances and perfumes or even foods, unfortunately. I wrote an entire book on this, so that's a resource if you want a deep dive. But parabens have been shown to cause contact dermatitis in some people. And dermatitis, skin inflammation, is significantly higher in children with high, ur high urine concentrations of parabens compared to children with low concentrations. And don't forget, a lot of our exposure to artificial estrogen chemicals comes from drinking out of plastics or not filtering your drinking water because there's a ton of plastic residue in sink faucet water. Again, I wrote an entire book on this and I'll do several upcoming videos on the topic, but women that use perfume, for example, have almost triple the concentration of monoethyl phthalate in their urine compared to other women that probably already have loads of other fragrance chemicals from lotions, deodorants, shampoos, they're in their system already. And of course, BPA is super common. I did a video called Worse Than We Thought, Plastic is Everywhere in Food, based on the new Consumer Report study where they found 99% of foods have phthalates and about 70% have BPA. This is food, not just liquid drinks. And of course, these were mainly processed foods. Now, why am I picking on hormone disrupting chemicals? Well, for one, the average lifespan of fat cells is 10 years. And it turns over the fat inside six times during those 10 years. It's based on atomic bomb exposure studies. So these estrogen mimicking chemicals take a long time to flush out of our bodies. People expect results within a few days or at least a few weeks. But sometimes a lifetime of poor choices takes years to overcome. So be patient as you flush this garbage out of your body. Even if you don't reverse your acne immediately, it's worth avoiding artificial estrogen chemicals for future hormone levels. You can accelerate the process with sunshine exposure and sweating, by the way. So use all the tools in your toolbox here. And keeping the focus on acne, acne is well known to be amplified by hormone imbalances. For example, when bodybuilders overdose steroids, they often get acne, sometimes extreme acne. And women with hormone imbalances, they often get acne because male and female hormones regulate the production of oil in the skin. And before we shift away from endocrine disrupting chemicals and acne, don't forget that soy is the number one phytoestrogen, meaning plant estrogen. And food processing companies sneak a lot of soy into a lot of things. And speaking of soy, the number one trigger for acne, in my opinion, is seed oils, including the ever-present soybean oil, or vegetable oil as they're legally allowed to call it to trick people. Scientists have studied some of the seed oils in the context of acne, like this example with sunflower seed oil aggravating acne, but they haven't aggressively pursued all the various seed oils specifically relating to acne, partially because it takes years to flush your system clean from seed oils, and also most people have diets that are so heavily saturated with seed oils you can't find a group of people to compare to. Oh wait, the hunter-gathering tribes where acne is surprisingly absent, right? 
But even that study comparison is challenging because they don't have artificial estrogen chemicals. Those are man-made. They don't have a lack of sunshine or inflammation from eating super high sugar and man-made preservative chemical rich foods. So it's hard to parse apart all the variables there. But here's the thing. Just 100 years ago, the omega-6 to 3 ratio was 4 to 1, or even less, and now it's 20 to 1 in favor of seed oil omega-6. This is almost exclusively from seed oils, saturating your corn chips, your salad dressing, your everything. Go, go through your fridge and check various foods. Uh, you'll find seed oils in your mayo, all over the place. If you're just buying foods that everyone else is buying, you're going to find them. Start watching for them and avoiding them. Uh, then you get the American Heart Association. I've done a one-minute video on why we should disband them if you're interested. And here they are obediently recommending cooking with all these healthy seed oils. Olive oil is the exception on this because that's a fruit oil, not a seed oil. And ironically, you shouldn't cook with olive oil because it becomes oxidized or damaged when you heat it up. Hence the words cytotoxic, meaning it kills cells. Mutagenic, meaning it increases mutations in your DNA. Carcinogenic, meaning it increases cancer. You should cook with butter or beef tallow like your ancestors did. Those are saturated fats, very stable fats. It's worth mentioning that literally every study on cooking with olive oil, whether extra virgin or refined olive oil, it's then compared to seed oils rather than animal fats, which would be far superior in a head-to-head -head comparison regarding oxidation because saturated fat is extremely heat stable. But anyway, I hope this gives you some direction if you have acne or if you know someone with acne or you simply want to prevent future outbreaks of acne. I would love to hear your ideas in the comments and I hope you like some of the best comments so they rank higher and help other people with their acne issues. There are a lot of areas with question marks like fluoride, which I'm not a fan of, but there's nobody studying that, so I don't know. But I hope this top five list helps.